first express my profound delight and sincere gratitude to all of you for honoring our invitation to be a part of this important summit. It is a privilege to welcome such important participants from diverse backgrounds, but with a common interest in ensuring that Ghana has a fully functional energy sector which, de which delivers on its mandate to build an energy economy with reliable supply of high quality energy, high quality energy services for the Ghanaian economy and for exports. This Maiden International Conference of the Ministry of Energy dubbed Ghana Energy Summit 2017 with the theme, the future of energy in Ghana, seeks to provide the forum for all of us to engage in healthy discourse on the policies and strategies for the sector, as well as the challenges that bedevils us. Since you'll spend a considerable time in the plenaries and breakout sessions for the achievement of the lofty objectives of the summit, I encourage you to make time, particularly those visiting Ghana for the first time, to explore the city of Accra, take in and enjoy its sights and sounds and to feel the proverbial Ghanaian hospitality. I also urge you to spend some time visiting the exhibition stands of our sector agencies set up outside in the lobby to acquaint yourselves. I was not oblivious of the Herculean task I was imposing on the team or the significant achievements in the energy sector over the years. In the power subsector, various reform initiatives in the past have culminated in institutional restructuring, providing an environment conducive for, pri for private sector participation and improved sector governance. The establishment of the Energy Commission, the decoupling of transmission from generation, the establishment of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission as an independent regulatory and tariff setter, the institutionalization and aggressive implementation of the National Electrification Scheme and the en enactment of the Renewable Energy Act are all commendable initiatives to ensure sustainable, reliable, and affordable electricity for households and industries and for exports. Ladies and gentlemen, in a similar vein, there have been visible developments in the petroleum subsector, particularly after the commercial discovery of oil in 2007. The petroleum subsector has witnessed accelerated development of legislation institutional reforms and aggressive downstream deregulation aimed at ensuring that the sector delivers enhanced value for Ghanaians and investors. Mr. Chairman, despite these achievements, our energy sector is still beset with daunting challenges. The deliberating power crisis that frustrated households and industry, bruised the economy and institutionalized doomso in our lexicon, speaks volumes of the weaknesses inherent in our power subsector development and governance. Knee-jerk reactions to the crisis led to the over-procurement of expensive thermal power capacity with serious financial consequences. If all the power purchase agreements currently in place are implemented, the nation will incur annual extra capacity charges 
of nearly 700 million US dollars. Deals driven generation capacity procurement has resulted in a very high average tariff for power, making our power the most expensive in the subs region. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that some industries and commercial entities are generating their own, power, own electricity using diesel is not only a, an amplification of the growing non-competitiveness of our tariff regime, but also points to the convoluted tariff structure. Our tariff structure does not provide adequate safeguards for the vulnerable, such as those living in compound houses and unfairly penalizes industry. In the past, on subsidies, payments of electricity consumed by MMDAs and other public institutions has resulted in huge government indebtedness to our power utilities. This debt situation has been exacerbated by unacceptable distribution losses, utilization of expensive short-term loans by power utilities, among others, resulting in a huge sector indebtedness of nearly 2.4 billion US dollars. I often say that I'm the most indebted minister in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, while the National Electrification Scheme has made significant progress with a national ele electrification access rate of nearly 84%, achieving universal access by our target date of 2020 remains a daunting task. Many of the communities yet to be covered are largely remote island communities and isolated inland villages. These will require innovative technologies to achieve adequate coverage, and of course, at a considerably higher cost. In less than six months of coming into office, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we have taken bold steps to address some of the stated challenges. We have reviewed over 30 power purchase agreements, prioritizing them for staggered development while placing a moratorium on others. We now have a thorough understanding of the current indebtedness of the energy sector and have structured a refinancing package that will dislodge these debts from the books of the sector entities into an energy sector bond. We have developed a cash, fall, a cash waterfall mechanism for the transparent collection and distribution of revenues from power sale among participants in the electricity value chain, including fuel supplies. We have prioritized mini electricity grids and standalone solar systems for remote communities to access electricity. Rooftop solar systems will be promoted in all government buildings to reduce their electricity bills, complemented with energy efficiency measures, such as deployment of LED and solar in public lighting. In the petroleum subsector, the ministry is intensifying efforts to accelerate oil and gas exploration and development. We will whip up investor interest in the less explored hydrocarbon basins, such as the inland Voltaean and the offshore central and eastern basins. We are equally accelerating the concurrent development of regulations to ensure seamless implementation of the new Petroleum Act in a transparent manner. We are working to ensure sustained availability of petroleum products at affordable prices while minimizing hazards associated with the industry, especially 
in the usage and handling of LPG. An LPG policy to address the disturbing safety challenges faced by the sector has been developed and is under discussion with key stakeholders before being finalized. We announced measures recently aimed at combating Ill illicit transactions in petroleum products that threaten the survival of well-meaning and honest players in the sector. The nascent and fledging oil and gas industry has exposed challenges in the regulatory and institutional alignment of the entire petroleum value chain, particularly in the gas subsector, which we are working on to address. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the myriad of challenges outlined are to a large extent a result of policy failures and weaknesses in the past. The ministry is committed to addressing these policy weaknesses in order to create an energy sector with a healthy balance sheet that makes it possible for us to keep the lights on and keep transportation running. This, we believe, can only be achieved by consultative develop, consultatively developing clear policies and focused strategies to, develop, to deliver these policy goals. The objective of this summit, therefore, is to create an environment for honest discussions of the challenges and opportunities of the energy sector with the hope that possible solutions required to truly actualize our vision will be the outcome. Ladies and gentlemen, the thematic areas that discussions will center on have been carefully selected to encompass critical areas of the sector and issues which in, require serious consideration amongst all stakeholders. I have no doubt in my mind that the caliber of facilitators and panel discussants, as well as the enthusiastic participants, the objective, objectives of this summit will be achieved. One key deliverable we expect from this summit is an enhanced medium-term energy policy and strategy for the energy sector with clearly defined investment opportunities outlined for the investor community. Let me express my appreciation and that of the ministry to all our generous sponsors. Without their generosity, this function could not have been made possible. I wish to particularly thank GOGIC, our headline sponsor, with funding from DFID. Our diamond sponsors, Go Energy, Talo, and Modec. Our silver sponsors, Cosmos Energy, Senate Energy, and Bridge Power. Bronze sponsors, Amandi, Frimps, Send Power, Total, Shesdek, Car Power Energy, Carl Bank, Trojan Power, Jensen Production, Tropical Cables and Conductors, Ebony Oil and Gas, Nexon's Cable Metal, Chamber of Bulk Distribution Companies, as well as all our sector agencies for their general support. Let me take the opportunity to thank the chairperson and the organizing committee of the summit for working around the clock to make this event possible. They have performed a yeoman's task. I wish also to extend my appreciation to my chief director and the ministry for the wonderful work they've done in coordinating our policy and strategy draft documents. On this note, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I now have the singular honor and pleasure to declare this maiden 
Ghana Energy Summit 2017 duly open. I wish you an exciting deliberations and constructive engagements. It is my fervent hope that the outcomes will positively redefine the future of Ghana's energy sector to our common and mutual benefit. Colleague ministers, honorable members of parliament, our development partners, my friends from the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>